My name is Teddy Jacobson of Actions by T. I am a pistol smith in Sugarland, Texas. I work on over a hundred different models of handgun actions. This tape will teach you how to buy a used handgun. I will make things very clear and show you how to evaluate a revolver and a semi-auto pistol. I have no agenda or ulterior motive. My only intent is honesty. I am not in collusion with any company or manufacturer. I have never been given a free gun from any company or one at a bargain price. It's a complicated process to look for a used handgun. I use specialized tools and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the tools that I use and tell you why I use them and then we'll go into the details of revolvers of all kinds. I'm going to work off a checklist so that I don't miss anything because it's quite involved. I'll keep it simple. A magnet is good to have. It does not have to be on a screwdriver. You could use any weak magnet. It does not have to be super strong. This is a super strong magnet that's telescoping type of uh, tool. You don't need anything like this. A feeler gauge is good to have. These are tapered blades. I'll explain that later. Standard feeler gauge is really all you need. Magnifier is essential. This is a magnifier that's five power. It's probably one of the best five power magnifiers I've ever seen. I bought it at Edmund Scientific in New Jersey and it comes in a little case. This is a little gauge that is used to check the forcing cone on any revolver. They come in different sizes. This is for a 38 Special or a 357 Magnum. You don't necessarily need one of these, but I'm, a, I'm going to explain how it works. I recommend that you have dummy rounds uh, of all calibers. This has no primer in it. There's no powder and there's no primer. You need one for different calibers. Some of these are live ammunition. Some of these are live bullets. These are what you would call a, a bullet chamber. It checks the chamber dimensions uh, for a bullet. So in other words, if you want to make sure your bullet is correct in size, whether it's been resized properly, whether at the factory or a reload, you would just drop it in and that tells me that this bullet is totally right, uh, the correct size. These uh, little gauges usually are made out of aluminum and they are uh, very accurate. You can buy it at places like Midway or Lock, Stock and Barrel in Nebraska. This little tool can be made out of a bolt or a piece of steel. It's a, uh, it's a chamber uh, indicator light. Well, all it is is a piece of steel that's been polished. The flat end has been polished mirror bright so that when you want to look at a chamber you can easily uh, get reflected light off it. I'll explain this in detail as we go. This light here has a fiber optic cable. This is to check all the internals that are hard to find areas where there is no light. It's very difficult to see, like inside a bore. As I, as I turn it on, you can see how it lights up. And uh, this is worth its weight in gold, and it can be purchased in places like Walmart. Now sometimes I do use a, a, a microscope. This is a 30 power microscope. You don't necessarily need to use 
a microscope at 30 power, but not in your selection process, but these are one of the tools that I do evaluate guns with. This is what they call a Hastings triplet used by jewelers. It's an excellent magnifying glass. It, uh, it's a 10 power magnifier. I don't think you need one this strong for what we're going to do today, but I wanted you to see it. This is a piece of nylon. This is one of the most valuable tools that I own. It's four inches long. The, the, the diameter is five sixteenths of an inch. It can be made out of nylon, Delrin, or ultra high density polyethylene. Any one of them will work. I'll explain all this as we go along. I buy that nylon or Delrin rod in larger pieces and I just cut it to size and I'll explain to you where you can buy this. I'm going to go through my checklist and this is a, a model Smith & Wesson model 66. Uh, this is a very good revolver and uh, we're going to start out checking the timing of the revolver. Assuming this would be a used gun that's the first thing you'd want to check. You would open the cylinder and swing it out and in the, in, below the cylinder is what they call the cylinder bolt. It's spring-loaded and as you can see this locks up into the recesses of the cylinder as you pull the trigger or pull the hammer back. This creates a line on the, around the circumference of the cylinder. That's normal. Every used revolver must have a line on it. There's no escape from that line because there, the spring tensioned cylinder bolt drags on the cylinder. With the cylinder closed, the first thing you'd want to do would be to take your cylinder and rotationally see if it'll disengage from the cylinder bolt. That tells me whether the cylinder bolt is holding in the notches. As I rotate the, the, the cylinder by pulling the hammer back, I do it again. If this is a six shot revolver, I would do it six times. The hammer could be front or back, it doesn't matter. I want to make sure that the cylinder stays in position regardless of which notch it is in. If this were to skip when I turn it rotationally, you've got a problem. It's locked on every one.